I'm back. Um, now that you're done with all the business stuff, it's time to get started with the real coursework. So let me just pull up my PowerPoint. Hi, now you're looking at Hefner Hall and just looking at Hefner Hall, which is so empty, makes me sad. I miss San Diego State. I miss it a lot. Um, but here we are. It's all good. And uh, we're going to stay safe. And uh, most of you signed up for summer school online anyways. So um, what are we going to do this summer? Well, we're going to talk about identities. And you're looking here at a Groucho Marx mask which I, yeah, I just saw that there's cats in the mustache and the eyebrows. I don't know why I never saw that before. But we're gonna talk about identity kits and how we take on identities for other people when we're writing. Now, I'm not talking about fake masks, fake glasses, or cat eyebrows and mustaches. I'm talking about the way people perceive us how if we develop awareness of that we can adapt the way we portray ourselves to better connect with our audiences now i want to introduce you to james paul g um, who some gosh maybe 30 years ago um, he wrote an article called literacy discourse and linguistics he is a linguist he studies language and he claimed in this article that language was not about grammar. Sometimes students come to me and they say, I think I'm not a good writer because my grammar is not good. I think I'm not a good writer because my commas are in the wrong place. And G claims, and I agree, that although grammar is a thing, different grammars work in different places. And so he describes a situation where he goes into a neighborhood bar and he sits down to have a drink. So here's what he does. He says, if I enter my neighborhood bar and say to my tattooed drinking buddy, may I have a match, please? My grammar is perfect, but what I have said is wrong nonetheless because it signals that he doesn't belong in this particular bar. And he goes on to say that it's less often remarked that a person can use the language perfectly and still not make sense. He claims it's not the way, it's not how you say it, but who you are and what you do when you say it. And he extends his example. He says, if I sit in my neighborhood, enter my neighborhood bar, and I say to my drinking buddy, as I sit down, Give me a match, would you? This is back in the days when you could smoke in a bar, which you cannot do in California. Give me a match, would you, while placing a napkin on the bar to avoid getting my newly pressed designer jeans dirty. He says, I've said the wrong, right thing, but my saying doing combination is nonetheless wrong. The thing is, it's not just what we say, but the way we say it, which isn't a direct, right way, wrong way, but it's situational. And it's not just the language, it's all the things. It's what we do, the way we do them. Um, later on in his article, he claims that anytime we're using language, we are engaged in saying, writing, doing, being, valuing, believing combinations, which integrate words, acts, values, beliefs, attitudes, and social identities, as well as gestures, glances, body positions, and clothes that all work together to form an identity kit. And the, what I didn't, the identity kit that people see is who they think you are. And that seems wrong. It might even seem unfair but it's largely true. And so the goal here is to be authentic, but to develop awareness of who it is that we are portraying. Because quite honestly, we don't always look the same to everybody. We behave differently with our grandmother than we do with our friends or with our colleagues or with our parents 
or with professors. It's all you, you should be authentic, but your language might be different. Your gestures might be different. You might even dress differently. And the goal here is to build what Aristotle described as ethos. And ethos isn't just the ethical argument, but it is the way we portray ourselves that helps us demonstrate that we are trustworthy. People can trust us. And they're more likely to trust us if we seem knowledgeable, like we know what we're talking about, if we seem objective or at least not terribly biased, if we seem to share our audience's values, and depending on the audience, the values might be different, if we seem to show concern for the audience, if we seem good or honorable or virtuous, or that particular audience. And again, I want to emphasize that identity kits aren't just about choosing masks. What do I want to look like today? But they're about connecting with audiences. And that changes according to the audience. Not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing. This is Bell Hooks. Um, who was an activist, a writing professor, um, and she studied education. She wrote a book called Teaching to Transgress. And in her book, she asserted that in our everyday lives, we speak differently to diverse audiences. Colleagues, colleagues in this business versus this business, professors, your rhetoric professor versus your physics professor, um, your grandmother, your niece and nephew, your partner, your friends. You have diverse audiences in your life and you speak to them differently. Why wouldn't you write to them differently? Bell continues, Hooks continues, we communicate best by choosing that way of speaking that's informed by the particularity and uniqueness of whom we are speaking to and with. We have an identity and the way we communicate, the way we hold ourselves, the way we engage tells the people we're addressing who we are. Now, what does that have to do with RWS 305 and this course? Well, this course is writing in various situations. So we're going to look at how we write rhetorically inside and outside the university. And by rhetorically, I do not mean rhetorical analysis, that you look at what somebody else wrote and analyze how they wrote it, but that you think of what you want to say and how you want to say it. Whether that's what you want to say inside of the university or beyond the university. Because it's important to learn how to adapt to our audience and our purpose. And how do we construct identity kits that allow us to engender trust or at the very least get people to listen to us. Now, that's what you'll be doing this summer. You'll be developing strategies for writing and communicating in a variety of situations to a wide range of audiences. I believe you're entering this course as an academically trained writer, but they also have various and important literacy skills and skill levels from all aspects of your life. I want you to come in and I want you to share them with the class. But I also want you to apprentice yourself to the world of rhetorical writing, thinking, reading, and arguing in academic world, professional world, civic world, and personal life. These new types of strategies can make you feel uncomfortable. No matter how you see as a writer, this class is going to guide you in new ways of engaging 
in critical thinking, arguing, reading, and writing. This is a skills-based class, and I'm going to ask, act as your mentor, and I'm going to allow you, <laughs> such a funny way to say that, but you're going to be practicing these sometimes brand new skills. I'll be correcting your errors with kindness and praising your achievements. I don't expect you to be perfect. I don't expect you to do everything perfect the first time. You'll make errors. You may struggle with tasks. You may be confused. You may not know everything. That's what I expect. But I also expect you to ask questions and ask for help, to be reflective on your process. And I expect you to explore con class concepts and apply any feedback you get. My desire is that you would become comfortable with uncertainty and that you would measure your progress only against yourself and not others. If at the end of the semester you say, I learned this and this, or I have grown in the way I write, you can count this as a successful semester. Now we have got four major projects. You're going to create a blog with four blog entries. Every one will be due on a Saturday. You're gonna write a personal essay. You're gonna write a resume and a cover letter designed to respond to a real job, an internship posting. And you're going to write a reflective essay in which you analyze the writing that you've done this semester as well as academic writing and your own process of writing. And that's it. You can get started, just click next, read the rest of this page, click next, and do all the things, and it'll be Saturday before you know it, and you'll be done. I look forward to reading what you've got for me. Thanks.